Tyler Edlin invited me on the channel today to talk about a key to designing stylized characters and what I think might be the antidote to same face syndrome. My name is Benaya and I'm a concept artist and former student of Tyler Edlin's. Let's dive in. In 2024, the world is filled with many artistic influences to choose from. So many styles have been defined by studios and the hundreds of artists working at them. These studios have created icons of character design, and they have developed specific looks and aesthetics that make them recognizable. Art styles go through trends all the time, and studios develop new ways of approaching their goals. This has a lot of impact on each new generation of artists. Students tend to have an obsession to work with the big companies like Riot Games or Blizzard or DreamWorks or Disney, and it often causes artists to get a bit lost. They lose sight of what they really love to do. And I don't know if that happened for me. I tried to make my art look like what I thought studios wanted me to do. Like I really like Blizzard and I really liked a lot of different games. And so I tried to make my art work realistic and gritty because I thought, you know, that will get me more attention and people will like that better. That's the best way to do it. Basically, instead of going back and mastering the fundamentals, what I was doing was trying to master a specific style or look that I thought that studios would wanna see. I had set up rules for myself that didn't need to be there and these rules started to really hold me back. And let me make it clear, it's not a problem to draw in popular styles or love them, but one thing's for sure, whatever genre or idea or kind of art that I was obsessed with was really holding me back from progressing in the way that I should have been. Here's why. So there's two main reasons. The first is that we weren't studying the fundamentals of stylization. And the second is that we were not studying references that were diverse enough. To the first point, I only ever studied what stylized art looked like. What it looked like on the surface. So basically I was learning what would be called the shorthand for a specific art style. Because I had an idea of what the art should look like, I skipped the building blocks. For example, since Disney tends to like this eye shape, I'll just use it because it must be good. In a way, I was using other artist solutions as a band-aid. Don't just copy art styles without understanding the why behind them. The second is that I only studied conventional models, the Pinterest model. This is the root cause of same face syndrome, and I think it waters down designs. I was basically studying a lot of people with similar proportions. I didn't understand how far a real person's face could go outside the standard so-called rules that you learn when studying a technique like the Loomis method. These rules can really hold you back. So let's break this down with some examples and solutions that I've discovered on my art journey. The fundamentals of stylization is shape. So the issue comes in that when instead of learning how to design shapes coming from reality and manipulate those shapes, you learn how one art style stylizes their specific shapes. Let's break down a classic example of a specific stylization and try and understand why they do it instead of just looking at it at the surface level. So this is how you can learn how an art style choice works. Anime sometimes takes the nose and makes it a small dot. This works because humans see the icon of the face and recognize it. In fact, we recognize it in many things. Now, anime is generally attempting to be extremely expressive and quick to draw. So most of the emphasis is placed on the eyes and the mouth. The small dot nose doesn't detract from this emphasis and allows the eyes and mouth to be the focal points. Also, in Japanese culture where anime originates, there's a long tradition of minimalist art styles and symbolic representations, so anime looks more at this than it does at this. The style choice has a goal, and it won't work well if done out of context. The breakthrough in my character design came when I had done enough studies that I finally started to understand the vast array of shapes that can be used to make up the human face and the human form. If you understand shape design, then you're able to push the shapes however you want. I still have a long way to go, but the path is clear. Now, the second issue I mentioned is closely related to the first in that no one person or art style actually fit any construction method I was taught. I saw a video of Timothy Chalamet being fit into the standard proportional head method. And for whatever reason, it made me realize that I tend to do this with many of my designs. Since I have an idea of what a face should be, even if I have something interesting going, I'll liquefy it to make it look more like the base model that I have in my mind. This results in the same face syndrome. It's what Disney executives do to keep every Disney movie looking consistent, and it's what many artists do to their own work 
when they have a predetermined idea of what their art should look like. To break the mold, I decided to find interesting and unique looking people and study them so that I could learn how shapes could be exaggerated from real life. Quick tip, look up unique faces on Pinterest to get a bunch of great faces to study from. I quickly realized that many cartoons may not be as exaggerated as you think. I'd take a face and use the exaggerated shapes that were already there, and this way I could learn how to aesthetically push the figure in ways that feel grounded in reality. This defeated my same face syndrome and made it so that I feel comfortable exaggerating characters who are asymmetrical and unique to my tastes. Only studying conventional models will limit you as an artist because you're only gonna be studying one kind of thing. There's nothing wrong with enjoying mostly more realistic and less stylized characters that are more conventional, but it's something you should still explore either way because we're always trying to push ourselves as artists. I wanna show you how this looks with some practical application, so let's put theory into practice. So here's a recent study session. Basically what I did is start with the base shapes. Normally I wouldn't have these underneath my drawing, but I thought it would be helpful for the demo to show kind of what I'm thinking. So for the most part, I try and find models that you'd think I was exaggerating if I didn't show you the reference photo. It's important because doing these studies where I'm not going too far into the realm of stylizing it in my own way and I'm keeping it somewhat like the reference, I can learn a lot from seeing those facial structures. For this guy in particular, the way that his chin and his expression is shifting his face is just super interesting and I felt like worthy of understanding and studying so that I can apply this to characters in the future. So going on, I just do a little bit of cleanup, but don't go too far with these. And here are a couple extra that I did. So now I'm on to the second kind of study. Basically, I am trying to push this further into the realm of character design, but I'm still using a reference that gives me a lot of ground to work from. And this is a great way to do it because you only have to push it just a little bit. Simplifying things, taking it a little bit farther to the next level. Specifically in this drawing, I wanted to um, take the eyes and the mustache, elongate the face a little bit, and try and cartoonize all those features. So you can see I'm just taking a few liberties here, pushing the ears. I added in a cigarette because I felt like that would be fun and add some dynamic character. I changed his expression a little bit and pushed the eyes. But again, the point of this is a study. It's not supposed to be perfect. It's just supposed to be a way to be stepping out of your comfort zone into learning how to draw these more pushed characters that are not how you normally draw. So I just did a couple of master studies along with these, just copying how other people are doing stylized characters and seeing how mine measures up. So here's the final challenge for how I like to do these study sessions. I grab another face, another reference, and I just start diving in. Uh, I'm trying to break down the shapes like I was before, but this time I wanna take it more to a finish and add some paint and tone. So I gotta think a lot more about the 3D structure of everything. As you can see on the kind of faded lines there, my first sketch pass was really not too great. I didn't push it enough. And so I'm just taking my time with it. And I think that's the really important thing here. I did a lot of passes over this, as you'll see in this time lapse, just trying to make sure that every single shape was right and that I wasn't trying to push it back to where I initially would feel like it should go. This really just goes over everything we talked about here. I'm taking the face structure, simplifying it as I can, adding in the kinds of things that I personally like and the kinds of things that I've learned from looking at other characters and character designers. For example, you might be able to see some influence from Ben Eblen in my work because he's one of my favorite character designers and I love the way that he does cheekbones and takes those styles to a different level. So you can see I'm just kind of finishing this first pass. At this point, I'm realizing that I missed the mark on a lot of areas, so I'm gonna knock it back again and push it a little more. So I moved the reference up to the left so I wasn't so directly seeing it while I was drawing. I always find that's a really helpful tip if you're trying to stylize something and you just keep falling back into a copying method. And here, the point of this one was really to step away from that and try something new. So I moved the reference to the side, 
I'm taking my own liberties here and I'm just kind of experimenting. This is probably the most fun part when you already have kind of a base that you can work from and it's really just a little bit of cleanup and a little bit of pushing the shapes farther to the direction that you want to go. At the end of the day, this is going to be heavily inspired by the reference, but that's still kind of the point with these exercises. So what's the goal here? Really be thinking about every shape that you're laying down, why you're putting it there and how it relates to the shapes of the anatomy of the face and the shapes that you're seeing on the reference model. The more you think about those things, the more you'll start to understand how those shapes are working in 3D space, which is the most important part. For example, the hair that I'm working on currently was something that I was able to mostly simplify in my mind down to tubes. And that way of simplifying them means that now this type of hairstyle, I could kind of work through and draw to a certain extent without any reference because now I understand those shapes. That's the way that you can get yourself from a point where you can't draw from imagination to one where you can. The more you understand basic shapes and how those shapes relate to things you might see in real life, the more you're going to be able to manipulate them. So I did a painting pass over the top to make sure I really understood the shapes that I was using. I tried to make the cast shadow show the form and I experimented a little bit with the textures. At the end of the day, stylization, shape design, and understanding the human form just comes with a ton of practice. If you're a beginner, I hope that you can understand why it takes so long to get good at these things. It's just a lot of memorizing, a lot of learning, and getting to a point where you're comfortable with a lot of different shape expressions. It's a never ending journey. There are people who do this for their entire lives and still say that there's more to understand. It's all about mileage and it's all about staying consistent with your practice always seeking to understand and learn from what you're doing and not just studying blindly. Alrighty guys, thanks to Tyler Edlin for having me on the channel. If you like this video, there's tons more like it on this channel. You can check out either of these videos. I'm sure you'll enjoy them, but that's all for now. Stay motivated and keep drawing.